Hey, AP Statistics, this is day one of many that we're going to have throughout the year, and this is section 1.1a, data analysis. All right, here's what I want to talk about as we begin this course. First, you'll notice that there is a note sheet that is attached to this PowerPoint, okay? I'm going to ask that you print this off, and then whatever we write down with respect to this PowerPoint, you write it down as well. That includes the definition and maybe any annotations that I include, largely because if you write things down, you're gonna remember it, okay? Even if you're very sincere about paying attention, in a week and a half, you're gonna have a test on this, and it's hard to remember everything that we talked about if you don't write things down, okay? If you choose not to print it out, that's certainly okay. You can just use a regular sheet of notebook paper, copy down the words and the sentences that follow, but if you do write more down, I find that students remember things a little bit better. Okay, second thing is, is I'm gonna collect your notes at the end of this chapter, and it will be for a grade, okay? You'll have to scan them through your, um, your phone or some other uh, photography device, and then you'll have to upload them to Google Classroom for an assignment that'll have listed in another week or so, okay? So please write some things down. I don't care if you write your notes down in pen or pencil, just as long as I can read it, okay? Second thing is that as we work through this lesson, you'll find that there is no mathematics computation. Meaning, for this particular lesson, I don't have any adding or subtracting or multiplying or division, nothing like that. It's all about vocabulary and organizing your thoughts to help represent good definitions, okay? So keep that in mind as we work through the year. In fact, when we finally get to a part where we do some mathematics, I promise you will not get any more sophisticated than Add, subtract, multiply, divide, squaring, and square rooting. There will be no trigonometry. There is a tiny section throughout the year, and I'm just going to say a section, where you do logarithms. But outside of that, it's very, very basic fundamental mathematics. Okay? But in the end, the idea is can you communicate what's going on in your head on a paper? Okay? And this is a good example of that skill with respect to this note taking, okay? So I will go through this at a very moderate pace, but feel free to pause this or rewind this video at any time that you need, okay? There is not a rush to get through it, okay? Further, if you have any other questions on this lesson, once we're done, you're invited to uh, send me an email and I'll, I'll connect with you through Google Meets, either on the second part of this class or after school, whatever fits you best, okay? I will also try to put these lessons up the night before they um, are supposed to be presented, okay? And that way, if you wanna look at things ahead of time and maybe spend some more class time working on your respective assignment, you can do that too, all right? So let me go to my very first slide. You'll see some definitions here. And here's what I got. I've got individuals. Sometimes I'll give you my own definition before I give you kind of the, the textbook definition. Individuals are basically nothing more than things that you are studying. Okay, they can be people, they can be things, they can be animals. It's just a collection of items that you wish to study, all right? The book will show this, okay? Are objects described in a set of data? They may be people, animals, or things. Not much different from what I shared before, just a little bit more scholarly in terms of how they wrote it, okay? Sometimes we study people, that's very common. Okay, we study people's health. That's very, very common in statistics. Sometimes we study animals, we study cows, we study um, chickens, okay? Sometimes we study things like golf balls, basketballs, tennis shoes, whatever. It's just a group of items that you wish to study. And the reason why we study items is to make things better, okay? We always wanna make a better product and that's why um, we do statistics. Okay. Now, when we have a group of items that we're studying, we need to classify their characteristics using variables. Okay. Variables okay, is a characteristic of an individual. Okay. If I'm talking about people, it could be hair color, it could be their height, okay. it could be their profession, it could be their education, it could be a lot of different things. All right. And we describe these variables using one of two types of um, representations. One is categorical. Okay? In categorical variables, places an individual into one of several groups okay, or categories. Okay? And they're ones that we usually describe using 
I hate to say just words, but that's basically it. Okay. It could be hair color. That's a description. Okay. You got blonde or brown or you have no hair. Okay. Red hair. You got purple hair. Okay. It could be eye color. It could be someone's religion. Okay. It could be someone's um, geographical location, what state they live in, etc. All right. It's so anything that you can describe about your intervals, uh, individuals using some type of um, categorical description, okay? Versus something that's quantitative. And when we think of the word quantitative, quantitative usually means something numbers related, okay? Now, I'm not gonna use the word numbers. I'm gonna use something a little bit more specific. I'm gonna use the words measurements, okay? Any description that involves a measurement, like a height or a weight, is what we call quantitative. And so the book gives a definition like this, says take numerical values for which it makes sense to find an average, okay? And again, you can find averages of weights, um, heights, things like that, all right? The last thing is called inference. An inference is the idea of what statistics is all about. In life, it's usually too difficult to find calculations for big populations. It's hard to find the average life expectancy of a human being. Why? Because there's too many of us, okay? It's hard to figure out the um, average age of a person in the United States. Why? Because there's too many of us, okay? And so what we do is we take samples. We take small groups of people within our population, and we find descriptions about them. And if we can come up with some conclusions about that small sample, then sometimes we're allowed to generalize those ideas to our bigger group, which is our population. And that's what statistics is all about. We take small groups of individuals, we come up with some conclusions about those individuals within our small sample, and then we generalize to our population. And that's what inference is all about. Using data from a small sample in order to generalize truths about our respective population, okay? Let's do an example, okay, to talk about the difference between categorical and quantitative variables, and we're going to use um, this for a very specific set of individuals. And here's what I got. It says, for an online dating site, people are asked to fill out the following questionnaire regarding the perfect mate, okay? And you can see what the questionnaire is, and people are asked to circle things or fill in some numbers, etc. And I don't want you to fill it out. What I want you to do is this. If we're considering what this survey is regarding, what are my individuals? Okay, think about that for a second. Now, some people say individuals here are people, and that's true, okay? We are studying people here. However, okay, people is a little vague. Can we be a little bit more specific about it, okay? And if you're gonna be a little bit more specific, it's, it looks like it's people who wish to date. Okay, and so I'm going to write that up to the top here. Uh, my individuals are people who wish to date. Okay, and those are my individuals. I know my font is not as pretty as the one that you see on the screen, but you know what? I'm pretty excited about this pen here. It's kind of magical and um, I kind of like this little technological, technological piece, okay? All right, second thing it asks is this, which of these items are categorical and which of them are quantitative, all right? What I'd like you to do is take a moment and for each one of these, okay? So you'll see gender here first, decide based off these answers if this is quantitative or categorical and just write it off to the side and then do the same thing for age and the same thing for height and size and children. Okay, I'm going to give you 30 seconds to do that. Maybe pause this um, recording, okay, while you're doing that. And then after that, we'll, we'll look at the answers and see if we have the same thing. Okay, so pause it now, write down your answers, and then we'll discuss in a second. Your second is up. You didn't pause it fast enough, okay? Pause it, get your answers. Here we go. Let me give you the answers. Okay, so first gender. We have both males and females here. That to me looks categorical, okay? So I'm going to just write a C for categorical. Maybe I'll write the whole thing. I forgot the C. Categorical. It's a bad R. 
That's okay, I'm a rookie at using this cool pen, okay? Age, age is a measurement of time for which someone has lived, okay? So age to me looks quantitative. So I'll write that, quantitative. Q-U-A, where'd my A go? There's my N, there we go. I will dot my I right there. That's the only I have. All right, heights. Now, if you look at the heights there, sometimes people feel that this is a little ambiguous because they're grouped in sections. Nevertheless, these sections here, these intervals, okay, to me, still appear as a form of a measurement. Okay, so I'm going to think that this is um, also quantitative. That turned out a little better. Oh my gosh, quant is. Better. Okay. Size. Okay. Question number four is size. And you can see we have skinny, we have medium, we have fit, we have Hulk like. To be honest, when I was a single guy, I always wanted the Hulk like dates, okay, because I knew if I was ever at an ASU football game and I smarted off, I could always have my lady date protect me, okay. So um, nevertheless, okay, if I looked at these, are they categorical or quantitative? It is definitely categorical, okay. And then finally, do you want children, yes or no? That is also categorical. Now, it doesn't mean that all these descriptors here, all these variables off to the left, okay, are um, necessarily quantitative or categorical based off the answers that you see. So, for example, if I look at height, okay, and I um, see those respective answers to choose from, I can sometimes say to myself, how can I rewrite my answer set instead of being quantitative, maybe I can make it categorical. Okay, and if I wanted to make this categorical, okay, what I could do is I could rewrite these differently using words like short, medium, tall, giant, you know, if you want to think about someone who's especially tall, okay. Same thing with size, okay. If I said size and I wrote these as categorical, but I wanted to make it the reverse representation, maybe quantitative, okay, then you'd have to consider something that involved measurements. Okay, maybe you're putting actual weights there. Okay. The last thing is uh, once children. It's a bad circle. Nevertheless, um, that is categorical. It's yes or no. If I wanted to make it quantitative, how would I do that? Okay. Well, I'd probably do that by asking something that involved measurement. Okay. Maybe the number of children that you would maybe want as part of your family. Okay. So sometimes things can be categorical. Sometimes they can be quantitative, but it's all about how they represent their answer, okay? All right, so again, some things that we talked about first. We talked about individuals. I'm going to highlight this up here. Those are people or things that you are studying, okay? Then we have our variables. These are all our variables. These are how we are describing our individuals, okay? And then again, you can decide whether these are categorical, or quantitative, okay? And so, um, again, categorical usually is some type of um, written expression that helps describe um, our individuals and groups, okay? Whereas quantitative is, is more representative of measurements, okay? All right, that's the end of this lesson. You'll look at this assignment. One, two, and then four through eight. That is just the first part of section 1.1. I'm going to give you another lesson on 1.1. It's going to be 1.1 part B. Okay. And you'll need a graphing calculator as we move through these lessons. So if you've got one, then great. If not, use your graphing calculator. Maybe download an app that says graphing calculator to help um, facilitate your, your, your number crunching in this. Okay. All right. I hope this was a good lesson for you. I'm excited to get started. And if you, again, if you have any questions, come see me on Google Meets or send me an email. Have a great day.